Scrappy Peeps, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to share a layout using the Pink Fresh Collection Dream On. These are three Cardigan Walsh Corgis. The half white, half black face is Ella, who's almost 15. In the middle is Jetson, who's 11. And then there's Sheldon, who's 6. Warning, I do lots of dog layouts. I flipped through the papers in the Pink Fresh Collection, and since most of them are lighter in color, I decided to use one as the background paper for a 10 inch square that I cut out of some peach paper. I knew that the smaller picture for my peace of mind needed to be higher than the bigger picture because of Jetson looking up. Truth be told, there was a treat above his head during the photo shoot. Also, I don't mind my pictures overlapping each other. As long as you can see the main parts of the picture, I'm good to go. Next, I cut a strip of that gray paper a little over 10 inches to add some color to my layout. I had intended to use it with the word smile showing, but that didn't work. I started at the top with it and then moved it down to the bottom and left it there for the time being. Honestly, I wasn't feeling the love for it, but I wasn't giving up just yet, so that's why I left it there. I needed something behind the big photo, and I love the big word 12x12 12 12 paper in the collection, but didn't want to cut up my sheet. I had the 6x6 paper pad and it worked perfectly from that. You can see in the video that I just trimmed probably like a quarter of an inch off the side of it because I wanted it to be even with my bigger photo. And it worked out perfectly to let the word happy show so I started adjusting things until I liked how the layout looked. Also, you can read the words and phrases and they kind of applied for these pictures. Since we had just lost one of our other corgis and this photo shoot was a step to move forward for us. Just so you know, a doily always makes everything better in my book, or two of them. Warning, I use lots of doilies on just about every layout and I do get teased about it from a few of my scrappy friends. That gray strip was still bothering me, but once I tucked it underneath, I decided I was happier with it and it could stay. Next, I started flipping through the embellishments for the collection. I like lots of stuff, but there wasn't much stuff with this collection. But I found as I was cleaning up that there were some more embellishments that I missed. I grabbed the puffy stickers and was drawn to the houses for some reason. Honestly, I didn't even realize there was a heart on one of them until I was almost completely done with my project. I like to place and move things around, so I just cut them out with the plastic sheet still attached. They were quite sticky and that was a great way to be able to get them exactly where I wanted without causing some damage to something by accidentally getting them stuck to something I didn't want them to stick to. Plus, I do a lot of clustering and being able to move things around is key for getting my clusters to look right. Then I realized I needed another doily. You can't say I didn't warn you about the doilies. Tip, cut them in half so you have double. When I use two like this, I like to overlap the edges so that it flows nicely from one doily to another. I still felt like I was missing some color, so I found that green and white pattern paper and decided to use it. I measured how long and how wide I needed to cut it to fit in that area next to the bigger picture. It was approximately seven something inches by three and a quarter inches. I don't know what got into me because usually I just wing cutting and start trimming if I need to. Once that paper was in place, the overall design started to balance out. Now I'm starting to like what I see. Also, I never really attach anything down until I'm pretty much done with my layout. It's just a thing with me and my creative process. I like options. I usually try to use some word art in my titles just to mix things up a bit. And I like getting fun with titles also. It's like a challenge to me to see how clever I can be. That delightful puffy sticker was calling my name, but what to use after that? I decided Delightful You would be my title. I really wanted Delightfully, but that just wasn't an option and I couldn't figure out how to make it one. I cut out the letters for the word you so that I could move them around on the paper. After I got them cut out, they were not standing out like I wanted them to and I needed to do something different for them. They just faded into that green and white paper and I didn't even think about that whenever I started doing it. I thought maybe that washi strip that came in the embellishments would work to go underneath the U letters, but it just, I didn't like it. So I went through my Maya Road goodies and dug out this little envelope that I love using these types of things to back titles, journaling, you name it. The craft paper also adds a nice contrast to all of the lighter colors on the page. I originally thought I would put the letters over the edge of the flap, closing the envelope, but then I didn't like how that looked and made the decision that they needed to actually be on the flap and not hanging over. I added half of that washi strip tape to the lower half of the envelope. I really love to use thin twine on things like this. 
I placed a Zot adhesive dot on the back of the envelope and placed one end of the twine on it and then just wrapped the twine around three times. I love little bows, so I made a little bunny rabbit ear bow and added it to the corner. I always make my bows separate. I've tried to make them with the ribbon or twine that's wrapped and they always look funky. I also always use a longer length of twine so I have fiddle room for my bows and my tails. I decided I liked what I was seeing, so this is when I decided it was safe to start adhering things on my project. I love that Memory Runner XL from Thermoweb because it adheres well, but you can also lift it up if you put something where you don't want it. I added foam adhesive to my smaller picture to make it stand out a little since it was smaller. I placed the doilies down and then realized they weren't exactly in the right place, so I pulled them up and moved them down. The word happy needed to show. The doilies were hanging outside the width of my photo, so I trimmed them down to even with the edges of it. I added some 3D foam adhesive to the smaller pictures so that it would pop up a little bit on top of the bigger photo and since it was smaller. I wanted to ground the word delightful, so I moved the letter stickers around until I could fit the lower loops of the word onto the craft envelope without covering the U up. So that's why I moved my letters around and rearranged everything. I cut small strips of the foam adhesive for the backs of the puffy stickers. Sorry, I went a little off camera here. I'm still trying to get used to how to do this. I also used my powder tool so that the other parts of the sticker wouldn't stick where I didn't want them to. Those puffy stickers were crazy sticky and tacky and I've never really had any that were that bad. In total accident that the heart house ended up in the middle. I didn't realize it until after I did this. Remember that I hadn't actually attached the square to the background paper or that gray strip, so I had to do that also. Next, I started adding foam adhesive to everything. I like to pop up my embellishments and give my layout some dimension. I added foam adhesive to that little picture to make it pop, and then I decided I wanted to add some to the title envelope also. So I cut small strips of the foam tape and applied it to the back of the envelope and then placed it on my layout. I added a little XOXO underneath the envelope, and then I also added a glassine envelope above my picture. I love that big button. It says I love you to the moon and back, and I wanted to use it. I like to anchor things in my cluster, so that's why I tucked it behind the houses whenever I did it. I tucked a wooden heart in behind that top photo and on top of the glassine envelope. I don't know what team you're on, buttons with string or buttons without. I really don't have a preference. I just thought it needed it on this particular project. I had thought about tying a bow on that button, but then I just decided a knot would be better. I used sots to attach the button to my layout, tucking it underneath the houses, and then I added some enamel dots to that envelope. I felt like it needed just a little more decoration. I added some puffy heart stickers up above the envelope, and then I tucked in some vines underneath the houses and next to the button. I just liked how they looked there. I added my journaling, which reads, we had April take Ella, Jetson, and Sheldon's pictures in August of 2016. We had lost Higgins in June, so this was a step to move forward for us. I'll be honest, I don't add journaling to every layout, but I did on this one and I'm glad I did. That's all for me today. I hope you like my project and I hope you decide to subscribe. Thanks.